All right. Well, I hope everyone can hear me okay. We're broadcasting here from Providence Classical Christian Academy and looking forward to seeing everyone in just a few days for our supply drop-off day on Monday and then first day of school coming up just on Tuesday. So uh, as we get started here, uh, just to be sure, I want to introduce myself. I'm Chris Buckles, serving as headmaster here at Providence this year. And uh, in just a moment, we'll also have Kyle Keating stepping in, who serves as our dean. And uh, each of us are going to be sharing a couple of different things in the orientation this evening. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate your time being here. Uh, I want to note that we will be recording this uh, orientation video. Mm -hmm. So if there's things you want to go back to and reference, or if there are families that weren't able to join us here tonight, uh, you'll be able to reference it again later, and we will release the link to that recording in the EPAC tomorrow. So uh, another note is any questions you have tonight, uh, we're not going to hold a live Q&A session on the Zoom, but we do have a link that you'll be able to click, and uh, is that in the chat there already? So it's in the chat. Uh, you can click that link and it'll take you to a Google form where you can submit your question. Uh, and we do ask that you would hold all question submissions until after the entire orientation because we may end up answering the question that you have before the end. Uh, but if we do get to the end and there are still some questions that we haven't answered, go ahead and submit a form. And we ask that you submit just one question per form. So when you open it up, you can type in your question, you can submit it, and then it'll give you the option to potentially submit a second form and a third form and so on, however many questions that you have. And that is going to help us in a few ways. One is many of you may have the same question and we can kind of aggregate that together and come up with an answer. Uh, some of those questions might just require a little bit more thought from us. And so that'll give us some time to think through and talk through it. And our plan would then be to release the answers to those questions to you by Monday so we can get those to you before the start of school. So we want to welcome questions, but at the same time, hold them until the end, and then uh, you can submit them through the given form. All right, so I want to start off really by thanking you all for your patience through this past school year. Of course, there were so many things that we never expected, and uh, the home learning season had its difficulties, but it also had its blessings with it as well. And uh, also, as we've been putting together the pandemic response plan, we've been meeting as a faculty this past week, talking through a lot of those details. And so I know there's a lot of things you're curious about, things that you want to know. And so we thank you for your patience, for your cooperation during this unique time. And we want to continue to encourage families to try and connect with one another. As many of you know, tonight usually would be a great time to come together into fellowship and reconnect at the end of the summer before the beginning of a new school year. And so since we don't actually have that opportunity tonight, we wanna to continue encouraging you guys to reach out to one another and continue making those connections, especially as we have quite a few new families that have joined us this year, uh, even some new families who have only joined us in the past few weeks. And so if you see as you're getting ready for school that you've got some new families in some of your children's classes, we wanna really encourage you to reach out to them and invite them in, welcome them, and, uh, and, and make those personal friendships here even at the very start of the year. All right, <clears throat> in terms of the agenda for tonight, I'm gonna kind of give you a bit of an overview uh, and then we'll kind of start going through the details of the evening. But actually before I uh, give the agenda, I'd like to open up with a short, short prayer uh, and then we'll begin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful that uh, we're able to gather together, even virtually, uh, that we happen to live in an age where uh, we can gather together uh, through means of Zoom or Google Hangouts or what have you uh, in the midst of a pandemic, that we're not completely sequestered off to our own spaces. We ask and pray, Lord, that tonight would be beneficial and fruitful for the families as they get informed and hopefully encouraged by many of the things that are being put in place and that are unique to this year, but also the regular updates and encouragements that we tend to share during this time of orientation. We pray you would give us opportunities to connect with one another personally. Uh, we're thankful that the students and the teachers will be able to be back in the building and that we will start seeing the families pass through from time to time as well. 
and uh, that we'll see one another's faces uh, in what feels like has been such a long time since we've been able to see each other's faces. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless this evening, that you would give the administration wisdom as we seek to navigate through this well, and that you would bless all of the efforts of the faculty as they work with the students as well as the families, and that you would give us all hearts of charity and grace as we seek to cooperate together uh, to, to make the very best of this situation. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. So in the agenda, uh, I'm going to start off just by talking about a few administrative matters, and then I'll talk more about Monday's supply drop-off day. Uh, and then I will give some pandemic response plan review. I'll kind of review some items and then give a few updates to that as well. And then I'll hand it off to Mr. Keating, and he will talk about this year's drop-off and pickup procedure. And so that not the Monday drop-off day with the supplies, but in the school day when you're dropping off students and picking up students, uh, we have some pretty particular items in regards to that. And that'll be a pretty comprehensive section. So that may even be something you wanna take some notes on. Uh, and then <clears throat> I'll talk about some academics updates and then I'll give it back to Mr. Keating who will talk about some student life updates as well as upcoming events and how we'll be handling a lot of those. So that's the general agenda for the evening. So to start off, we're gonna talk about a few administrative matters. The first thing I want to note is we have a few new faculty members with us this year. Some new, some new in quotes. Uh, and so the newest faculty members that we're welcoming to our faculty this year, uh, first is in pre-K, we have Mrs. Kathleen Ackridge. Uh, we're so delighted that she's gonna be joining us. The faculty got to meet her this week at our training and parents will get to meet her on Monday. Uh, we also have Mrs. Patricia Horton, who will be teaching second grade. We gave an announcement in the EPAC a few weeks back uh, announcing her arrival, and we're so thankful that she's joining us as well. And then two other faculty that are new, but that many of us know quite well, uh, Mrs. Heather Dernlin, who is returning to teach kindergarten for us this year, and we're overjoyed to have her back. And she's very excited to meet her students this coming week and also Mrs. Stephanie Bliss, who has returned to teach math. She had taught math for us for a couple of years, uh, took a year hiatus, and now she is back with us this year. And in line with that, uh, what we normally do with the orientation is we would have the whole faculty line up in front of the sanctuary and introduce you to all of them. I don't have all of them here to be putting faces to names, but I do wanna go down the list of who all of our faculty are this year what they will be teaching, uh, just because I'm sure you're very interested in that information. So in the grammar school, as was already mentioned, in pre-K, we will have Mrs. Kathleen Ackridge. And in kindergarten, we will have Mrs. Heather Dernlin. In first grade, we have Mrs. Colette Upton returning to us this year. Second grade, as was mentioned already also, we have Mrs. Patricia Horton joining us for her first year with us. In third grade, we have Mrs. Jackie Gathman joining us once again this year. And in fourth grade, we have Mr. Jacob Stoll returning. And in fifth grade, we have Mrs. Kim Sparks, who will be joining us once again and continuing to serve as the grammar school teacher liaison. And we will also have Mr. Jacob Duvier teaching the fifth grade composition this year. We have in sixth grade, Mrs. Bethany Chelsvik continuing to serve as the primary sixth grade teacher. And then we have Mrs. Stephanie Bliss teaching the sixth grade math and Mr. Stuart Dace teaching the sixth grade science. And music, we will have Mrs. Krista Ryder continuing to serve teaching all of our music classes. Mrs. Lindsay Block will be teaching fourth through sixth grade Latin and Katie Scogan will be returning to teach PE both in grammar school and in upper school. I'll have some more notes on upper school PE in a moment. And Mrs. Kimberly Doyle will continue to teach art in both the grammar school and the upper school. So those are our grammar school faculty for this year. And now into the upper school, we have Mrs. Kareen Zrodlowski returning, teaching seventh, eighth, and 10th grade math classes, as well as 10th and 11th science class. Then we have Mrs. Lindsay Block. In addition to teaching grammar school Latin, she will also be teaching the seventh grade literature class. Mr. Jacob Duvier, in addition to teaching fifth grade composition, will also teach seventh and eighth grade composition, ninth grade rhetoric, and 10th grade literature. 
Then we have Mr. Stuart Dace, who in addition to teaching sixth grade science, will be teaching seventh, eighth, ninth, and 12th grade science as well. And then we have Mr. Pete Watson joining us once again to teach seventh and eighth grade Bible, seventh and eighth grade history, and ninth and 10th grade theology. And then I will be teaching eighth grade logic this year. We also have Mrs. Bethany Chelsvik, who will be teaching eighth grade literature in addition to teaching the sixth grade. Mrs. Stephanie Bliss will be teaching ninth, 11th, and 12th grade math in addition to teaching sixth grade math. Mr. Andrew Block will be teaching seventh through 10th grade Latin as well as 11th grade Greek. Mr. Kyle Keating, in addition to serving as Dean, will be teaching 12th grade theology and the 11th and 12th grade history class. Miss Rachel Brewer will be teaching 10th grade history, 11th and 12th grade rhetoric, and 11th and 12th grade literature. Mr. Jonathan Matul will be returning to teach 10th grade rhetoric and 11th grade theology. Mrs. Krista Ryder, in addition to the grammar school music, will be teaching the 9th through 12th grade choir. And again, Mrs. Kimberly Doyle will be teaching the upper school art classes, and Mrs. Katie Scogan will be teaching the upper school PE classes. In terms of our staff and administration, once again, I'll be serving as headmaster this year. Kyle Keating will be serving as dean. Mrs. Katie Scogan will be serving as the director of athletics. Mrs. Pam Case will be serving as administrative assistant. Mrs. Ginny Matul will be serving as a part-time recep receptionist. And Ms. Linda Mrs. Linda Vassola will be serving as bookkeeper. So of course, if you ever have any other questions about that information, we'd be happy to share that with you. We hope that on Monday, you can put some faces with some of those names, especially many of our new families. And we're all very excited to, to get acquainted with you. Please excuse me as I fumble over many of my words. I've done a lot of talking this week, far too much. And so uh, I'll try not to do that anymore the rest of the evening. Uh, before we move on, I would like to say another short prayer just for our faculty in particular. And so if you would all join me as we pray for our faculty and staff this year going into school. Heavenly Father, uh, we particularly want to pray uh, a blessing over our faculty this year and ask, Lord, that truly you would bless them with strength. Lord, you would bless them with wisdom. You would bless them with insight and compassion and patience and endurance to continue to serve the students well amidst contingencies, amidst uh, of continuing to be rampant disease in our nation. And Lord, we ask and pray that uh, you would grow our faculty this year uh, as they continue to teach. We know that in many ways our faculty can be the chief learners. And so Lord, it is our uh, heart's desire that you would continue to work on us as we seek to educate students and that as you work on us, you would work through us uh, so that the students would grow uh, because of the interactions and the conversations we have with them. God, it is a blessing to serve as a teacher, and we ask and pray that you would continue to give us hearts to see the responsibility that we have in that, that you would give us the needed encouragement to carry on with this calling. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you for joining me as we uh, recognize our faculty and as we hold them up in prayer. Uh, to close out the administrative piece of the evening, I wanna talk about enrollment and a few other updates. So I'm glad to say that our current enrollment as of this afternoon is at 100 students for next year. Um, we actually have a handful of families that are still working through the application process that will likely be finished with the application process in the next couple of days. Uh, and so it looks like we very well will be above 100 students for this year. Uh, and we've had a lot of renewed interest in the, in the school, given various other schools' response to the pandemic. In addition, I want to give another update regarding Deeds for Dollars. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about pandemic response plan updates in terms of you know families coming in to volunteer time at the school and visit in the school for things like class parties and so forth but nevertheless we have decided to make a revision to deeds for dollars for this year typically uh, the requirement is to have 50 hours of service in a year we are going to cut that in half and so we're going to ask families just to provide 25 hours of service because we know the current circumstances in a variety of ways are going to limit 
family's ability to come in and volunteer and to serve. Uh, and so we'd be happy to hear any other questions about that or clarification, uh, but otherwise the program will continue to remain the same. And uh, we'd love to see our families still find ways to serve and contribute to the school. We know it's many of yours desire to very much be a part of your child's education in various ways. And we wanna continue to invite you to do that. Uh, kind of in line with that, if you do have intention to come in and serve or volunteer in some way in the school, uh, we do ask that you fill out a background check form. Even if you're not necessarily intending on coming in to serve in some way, if you are a Providence parent, we do wanna have for all Providence parents an up-to-date background check form on file. So even if you filled one out last year, we need you to fill out that form once again. And the best time to turn that into the office would be this Monday for the supply drop-off. And in the past couple of EPACs, I think, we've had that announcement and there's a link and it'll be in tomorrow's EPAC also that'll take you to the form. And uh, it, it's a, not a very lengthy form. I think the main bit of information that you may not have immediately in your mind is your driver's license number, uh, something along that. And so it might take you just a minute to find your driver's license, get that in. But that is of no charge to the families. We just need you to fill out the form, turn it into the office, and we will run that background check. If there are extended family members or friends who would like to volunteer in some way at some point during the year, we ask that they also fill out a form and we would actually charge them just a small fee of $15 just to cover for the processing. But we do cover the fee for all of our Providence parents and immediate guardians. Uh, also, you would have seen in the EPAC, the Providence app is up and running. And so if you haven't downloaded the app yet, I would really encourage you to do so. You can go to your device's app store, look up the Providence School app and have the, and you can download it and you can start to explore the many features that it has. There's some things that Mr. Keating is gonna to talk to you about tonight, some immediate uh, conveniences that it's going to have for you in terms of our pandemic response plan, some of our screening questions, uh, but there's all kinds of other things that, that the app is going to provide for you as well. And we really want to continue moving towards using the app for those who are immediately in the community because we're excited to say we are in the middle of uh, revamping our website and uh, updating our website. And so our website, our website will have a relaunch coming up uh, in probably the next several weeks. And when that comes out, I want to make you aware that the website will be a bit more outward focused to prospective families who are looking to learn more about Providence. And most of the resources that families that are current at Providence would go to the website for are now in the app and hopefully that much more convenient for you as you seek to use those tools. So again, of any of these things, these might be things you have some questions about, but we might be giving some clarification on some of these points as we continue to push through tonight's presentation. Moving right along, uh, the next big event after tonight's orientation is Monday, our supply drop-off day. And so we did attach in my email on Tuesday night, and we will have attached in the EPAC tomorrow all of the details, but I did want to iterate them here just to offer any clarification that that can give. But we will have families arrive in a staggered schedule. So you'll see on that document that it's staggered by last name. Families with the last name of the letters Q through Z can come between 9 and 10 a.m. Families with the last name L through P can come between 10 and 11 a.m. Families with the last name G through K can come between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. And then families with the last name beginning with A through F can come between 1 and 2 p.m. Uh, and so please stick to that st staggered schedule. If for whatever reason, you're just not able to make it during the assigned time, go ahead and send us a quick email just to let us know. And that's not gonna be a huge deal if we have one or two families that need to come during a different time. Our main goal is to try and keep the amount of people in the building at once to a minimum. When you do come, uh, when you enter the building, we do ask that you sanitize your hands. There'll be a station right there at the door when you walk in. Make sure you sanitize your hands as you enter the building. Maintain social distancing as much as you are able, passing through the hallways, getting into the classroom to put supplies in the desk or in the locker. And we do ask that everyone who is entering the building at that time wear a mask. And we will be actually providing masks to students as they arrive that day. 
uh, we were very kindly uh, given a whole bunch of masks that we're very happy to give over to students. They come in a few different sizes. We have some really small ones, we have some bigger ones, and we have some that are in between. And so you'll be able to get a mask that's your size, and it's also compliant with the mask standards of our pandemic response plan. And so if you already have a mask that you like, that's great. Uh, you're welcome to use that one if it is meeting the parameters. Uh, if you don't have one, now you have one. Uh, or you might just start be building a collection, uh, like many of us are, having our collection of masks now. So we will be giving a complimentary mask to every student that arrives on Monday. Uh, and uh, we want to have one of those in each student's hands. Uh, grammar school specifically, when you arrive for this uh, supply drop-off day on Monday, go straight to your classroom. If you're not sure where your classroom is, if you're a new family, please feel free to stop by the office briefly and ask for some direction and where to go. I also want to alert all families that there is still some painting going on through the hallways, and so a lot of the signs that actually indicate which classroom for which grade are actually taken down right now because of the painting. Uh, so we're very happy to direct you from the office. I'll be here, Mr. Keating will be here, uh, and we'll be able to point you in the right direction. But ultimately, we want grammar school families to go straight to that classroom, and I know some of you will have to stop by a couple of classrooms, which is perfectly fine. And the teachers should be there for the most part waiting for you so that they can greet you, give you any instructions, and so you can meet them. Upper school students and families, uh, you will get your locker assignment from the main office. So make sure that when you come in, you go straight to the office, you'll receive your locker assignment. And you can also drop off at the office any cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, tissues, wipes, and Homer. So you'll come in, stop by the office after you've sanitized your hands, grabbed your complimentary mask. Make sure you get your locker assignment. Your next stop will be Homer, where you can drop off supplies. Grammar school families, you'll drop off your supplies in the grammar school classroom that your student is in. And then, upper school after you drop off your supplies in Homer, you will go to your assigned locker and you can store your books and supplies in an orderly manner, get all set up for the school year, get settled in so that on the first day of school, you're ready to go. Uh, one other supply list update, and this is kind of for everyone. If you are unable to find Lysol wipes, disinfecting wipes, we know that those are very scarce right now. If you've been unable to find something like that, we would ask that as a replacement, you would bring a roll of paper towels or a couple rolls of paper towels. We have some sanitizing spray that we'll be able to use. And so in lieu of sanitizing hand wipes, if we could have paper towels to help us work through uh, sanitizing with spray, and paper towels. That would be very helpful. So if you have been unlucky in finding some sanitizing wipes, please bring some paper towels as a replacement and that will be just as good in our situation. All right, so that's it for Monday. Uh, we hope to see you all that day coming in through the staggered schedule and it'll be nice to wave and say hello and get you settled in before the first day of school. Next, uh, I want to give some pandemic response plan review as well as updates. So some of the things I'm gonna be hitting on here uh, are not necessarily changes, but just things I want to emphasize about the pandemic response plan. There are a few other things that are updates as we've been talking about as a faculty, and, and a lot of them updates more in just kind of the fleshing out of the actual details of how it's gonna work out in the day to day. So the first thing I want to emphasize in the pandemic response plan is our cohort system. Uh, a big guiding principle of a lot of the things that we've put together about how our day-to-day -day operations are going to run has a lot to do with keeping the cohorts separate. Uh, having those cohorts separate ensures that if there is a positive diagnosis of COVID here in the school, that we're able to contain it within that particular cohort and be assured that it hasn't spread beyond that cohort. Uh, that's quite a challenge. Uh, there's a lot of different points during the school day where students potentially could have uh, crossed over and mixed, and we've done a lot of work this week to ensure that cohorts are not overlapping, and if there's even a point where cohorts are sharing a space at some point, or if there's a teacher that goes between cohorts, such as music, art, or PE classes, we're taking the proper precautions to make sure that there was never an exposure from one cohort to the next, or from a cohort of students to a teacher that's traveling between cohorts. So I want to emphasize that to families because uh, we want you to get on board with that as well. And we ask that you help us uh, you know, continue to observe that. Now, obviously we know that siblings cross over cohorts and, and that's okay, but uh, the, the main rule is that 
If you are entering the building for any reason, we would only want you to interact with a single cohort and not to interact with other cohorts. And also to understand the links that we're going to, to try and keep those cohorts separate. So that again, if there was a positive case, only one cohort may be affected and the other four cohorts can continue going about their business as usual. The next set of updates has to do with masks. I'm sure there's a lot of questions about, well, which students need masks, the students that need masks, when should they wear masks? And so the first thing I wanna say is all students are required to have a mask with them at school. Uh, that doesn't mean that all students are gonna need to wear masks throughout the day uh, at school. And so that's part of the reason why we're providing masks for families. Uh, but every student needs to have a mask with them at school. So that's kind of part of the school supplies that they should have here. Uh, another reminder about masks is we don't want it to have any distracting patterns or be of a distracting color. And so make sure that the mask is well within the spirit of kind of our uniform policy. It doesn't have to match the uniform specifically, but that it is uh, you know, not distracting from uh, the work that we're doing in the class. Uh, again, we're providing masks that are compliant with that, so each student will definitely have a mask like it. But if you have another mask that you prefer, other than the one we're providing, that meets the standard, you're very welcome to wear that. In addition, I wanna say that if I, you know, list there's a time that a student is not required to wear a mask, students are always welcome to wear a mask. Uh, just because we're saying you don't have to wear a mask in this specific context does not mean that students can't put it on if they're just more comfortable having that mask on or if parents would rather have them wear a mask in that context. So the first thing to note is upper school students and all faculty must wear masks throughout the day. So that's the first, you know, kind of clear directive to give. And that is a slight change from what we had uh, potentially indicated in the original edition of the pandemic response plan. But as it's become clear to us, I wanna make sure that I'm defining for everyone here what we've been seeing from the county guidelines is what counts as an exposure is if there are a group of people in the same enclosed space without masks for 15 minutes or more, that counts as an exposure. If all of those same people are in that same room wearing masks, that does not count as an exposure. Uh, and so if I'm incorrect, Mr. Keating can correct me on some of this, but, uh, but that's one of the working rules that we've been going by. And that even in our faculty training this week, we've been meeting in the multi-purpose room spaced out, but at the same time, we've all been wearing masks so that we don't get exposed because we realize if the faculty got exposed to a positive case, the first two weeks of school would likely be canceled. So we needed to take that precaution to make sure that we're in good shape to start school on Tuesday. And that's what we're gonna ask of the upper school students as well, uh, just because of what it says about the age range uh, of where this contagion can spread. So again, upper school students and all faculty will need to wear masks throughout the day. Grammar school students will need to wear masks in particular circumstances. Uh, and so especially when we're thinking of the pre-K through third grade grammar school students, they will be wearing masks most limitedly Fourth through sixth grade might have more situations where they're wearing masks, but these are the general circumstances where we would ask a grammar school student to put the mask on. One is during co-curricular classes. So if they're in their music class, art class, or PE class, if it's an indoor PE class rather than an outside activity, we would ask them to put a mask on uh, because those teachers are crossing between cohorts. And so we wanna make sure that there is no exposure happening there because that exposure would then carry off into the other cohorts. The second time a grammar school student might need to wear a mask is if they have a substitute teacher for the day. Now it's possible that uh, if the sub comes in, they don't need to wear a mask, but we wanna ask students to be prepared to wear a mask depending on who the sub is, just to make sure we are not having an exposure. Likewise, at pickup and drop off at the beginning of the day, and passing through the halls, we ask students to wear masks. So as they're arriving at school, they need to have their mask on until they get to their classroom and then they can remove that mask. And again, this is grammar school students. And then when they're leaving at the end of the day, they need to wear their mask on the way out. So the main time that students in the school building will be permitted not to wear masks will be Grammar school students, especially those youngest pre-K through three, but also many times for fourth grade through sixth grade, when it's just the grammar school class with their main grammar school teacher. 
uh, in those contexts, we're not necessarily going to be asking students to wear masks. Likewise, uh, once we get a couple weeks into school, we may remove the, um, the uh, I'm losing my words here, the, rec the requirement, that's what I was looking for. We may remove the requirement for grammar school faculty to wear masks in that same situation when it's just them and their grammar school students. However, uh, we realize uh, that, you know, there's a lot of details with, you know, these mask requirements that we're putting out here. Please send us questions if you have questions or concerns about any of this. You know, we would love to hear from our community just to know more about what you're comfortable with, uh, as well as what you need clarification on. Uh, I, I just want to say right now that as we go into next week, there's going to be a lot of trial and error going on, uh, and that in a lot of ways, we're going to begin by doing what's deemed to be the very safest thing. Uh, but even as we're going along doing that, we're going to constantly be reevaluating what we're doing, trying to figure out if anything needs to be course corrected or adjusted. And some of your feedback could be very helpful with that. Uh, next, aside from masks, a uniform update. So we are going to allow one concession in the boys' upper school uniform. Since upper school students will be required to wear masks throughout the day, we are not going to require upper school boys to wear their tie for as long as the mask requirement is in place. Now, gentlemen, upper school gentlemen, I want to be clear when I say that when the mask requirement, Lord willing, is eventually gone, the ties will be back. But for now, we realize that the added, you know, having the top button buttoned with the tie, with the mask, it's, it's a difficult situation. And so we are going to allow that one concession for upper school boys saying that when we do have to wear masks, you don't have to wear your tie. However, we do want you to keep your tie neatly in your locker, just in case there are given situations. There will be some days that you'll need to have that tie, like picture day, or uh, if there's some other kind of dress uniform day. But in general practice, we are going to allow the upper school boys to go without their tie. Again, if you want to wear your tie, you're of course welcome to do that. Uh, just because we're saying you don't have to in a given situation doesn't mean that you can't. All right, moving along, home learning. Uh, so there are some possible situations where we may need to go into home learning again. The main one being if there is a positive COVID case in a cohort and we need to ask a certain group of students to quarantine for a period of time. Uh, the other, of course, would be if there was, you know, massive changes going on in what the county or the governing authorities are mandating and all schools were pushed out into a home learning situation similar to last year's situation. I want to just remind you all that as long as there are just guidelines being given, we're going to make every effort to work within those guidelines so that we can have school in the building, uh, Lord willing, through the whole year. But the important thing to do uh, with home learning is that at no point will we just stop school and stop offering education. If a cohort needs to go into quarantine for a period of time, we're going to continue moving along in the curriculum through a home learning situation. If the whole school needed to quarantine for a period of time, we would continue offering home learning. At no point would it be our intention to have the learning stop. And so that's the most important thing to remember is that the learning won't be postponed just because there is a need for a small group or a large group to go into quarantine. Lunch, uh, in terms of how lunch is going to work, lunches will be by cohort. Uh, and so we have five cohorts in the school and lunches will happen just within those cohort groups. And so we have changed the grammar school and the upper school lunch schedule a little bit. Uh, we'll share more with students about that when they arrive on Tuesday about the actual times of it all. But lunches will be split up by cohort so that students won't be exposed to people from other cohorts in the midst of lunchtime. In addition to some other notes about lunch, we will allow the use of microwaves for fifth grade and up, which has been our policy over the years. What we are going to do is we have three different microwave carts. And so fifth and sixth grade is one cohort, fourth grade as well, but they won't have the use of microwaves. Seventh and eighth grade is another cohort, and ninth through twelfth grade is another. So there's going to be specific microwaves for specific cohorts. So again, microwaves will be contained to specific cohorts as well. Uh, if for any reason you would rather your students not use a microwave, 
just make sure that you don't send any food that would need to be warmed up. You're of course always welcome to send food that's ready to eat as it is, and then they don't even need to mess with the microwaves, but those will still be available uh, for any you know, families or students who would like to access them, and they will be restricted to specific cohorts. Uh, upper school students will have access to the large milk cooler, so we don't have a hot lunch program or milk for sale this year, so that cooler will be empty, other than the fact that upper school students can place lunches in that cooler if they would like to keep them cool up until lunchtime. So that will be available in the multi-purpose room as well. Likewise, upper school students will still be permitted to eat lunch outdoors, and that will be fine. We'll ask them to observe to an extent social distancing, but again, they'll just be eating with their cohort. There will actually be two different upper school lunch shifts, one for middle school and one for high school. Uh, so I think that's it for lunch. And then the last thing with the pandemic plan, and then I'll hand things off to Kyle, uh, is some things that might be worth practicing at home over this coming weekend, especially for the youngest kids. One of them uh, would be mask use. Uh, even if it's a student that's not necessarily going to need to wear a mask very much, uh, we always want them to be ready to pop that mask on. And so if they're unsure of how to put it on, uh, please make sure you practice that with them before they would come to school. Uh, I imagine that most of them are probably pretty familiar with it by now, living in the world that we live in currently today to go to many places. We've gotten quite used to wearing masks, but at the same time, uh, if a little bit of practice certainly wouldn't hurt. Uh, opening lunch stuff. So uh, it would be very good uh, to practice that with your students. And what I mean by that is the small packaging to open a fruit cup or to open a bag of chips or, or whatever it is that you plan to be packing in your child's lunch. It wouldn't hurt to do a practice run maybe this weekend on Saturday or Sunday or maybe even on Monday to have them practice opening their own lunch items. We will have adults in there supervising lunch, but we do want to limit the adults touching the students' food items. And so as much as students are able to open their own lunch packaging, that will be very important this year. Uh, likewise, I would say try not to pack anything that might be really messy in lunch, things that could potentially spill or you know, just cause a spread around the table uh, carrying all kinds of things. So as you're packing lunches this year, you might need to rethink some of those items that you put in there, strategize trying to prevent some of those kinds of situations. Uh, and then finally, uh, pre-K and kindergarten uh, belts and, and clothing. It's good to practice some of those things as these youngest of our students are getting used to the uniform. Uh, if they struggle, you know, the young boys with the belts or, or if the young ladies struggle with their uniform, it would be good to put them maybe in their uniform one day this weekend to practice going and using the restroom on their own or doing whatever else that they need to do so they can start getting at home in that uniform. So just a few things that would be helpful, especially for the really young ones to be practicing before they arrive at school on Tuesday. But I wanna encourage you that, you know, our attitude here is that we're all learning together as we go into this first week, especially. Uh, there's gonna be, like I said, a lot of trial and error. There's gonna be a lot of bumps in the road. And we're hopeful that after the first couple of weeks, we start really getting into a smooth rhythm in the uh, beginning and end of the day, as well as throughout the day. So speaking of beginning and end of the day, Kyle is now gonna talk more with us about our drop-off and pickup procedures this year. All right, thank you, Mr. Buckles. Uh, it is uh, a pleasure to be with you all this evening. I am uh, Mr. Kyle Keating, serving as Dean here at Providence. Uh, there is much to cover tonight, so we'll get into it. Uh, my section that I'm going to discuss right now is drop-off and pickup procedures. Now, one thing you'll notice is if you've already downloaded the Providence app, there's going to be a button in the top left that says All School Orientation Information. And in that uh, will be a document that already details all of the procedures I'm about to describe. So you can follow along in the app if you wish. Uh, that document will also be available in the EPAC tomorrow. Uh, so everything I'm about to say will be in written form to you. Uh, so you can take notes if you want, um, but we are also delivering all this in written form to you as well because it's a lot. Uh, drop off and pickup is one of the things that will be um, most uh, impacted by our desire to maintain our safety plan. Um, and so uh, the, the biggest change or one of the biggest changes is that as students arrive and are picked up from school, they'll be asked to wear masks and that includes even our younger students. And then of course, any parents that are entering the building uh, while dropping off or picking up their kids will also need to wear 
masks at that time. So I'm gonna start by walking through our drop-off procedures. Our drop-off procedures are actually going to begin before you leave the house. And they begin before you leave the house uh, by you submitting screening questions for us. Um, one of the recommendations of county health officials is that any school that's opening uh, asks screening questions that are uh, basic questions about whether a, a student has had a temperature, particular symptoms, or if they've been exposed to someone with a positive uh, case of COVID-19. And so rather than asking all of those questions of each family in person every day, uh, a process that would, would probably make our drop-off time last far too long, uh, we're asking you that you would asking you to submit them digitally and the way that the simplest way to submit them digitally is through the app and so this is really the the place where it's it's particularly important for you to download uh, the providence family app and that is that if you look in your app store that's the title it'll be providence family app and you'll know it's our app because it has our logo on it when you open the app you're going to see a button that says uh, covid screen covid19 screening questions uh, and when you click on it, it's going to ask you to log in to your parents' web uh, or Fax Family Portal login. It's, uh, it used to be called Parents Web. It's now called Fax Family Portal. Um, that's the login that you'll use there. It's the same login that you would have used um, for uh, other, other parts of your Providence experience. And so once you log in, you're going to, on the left, there's going to be a menu option. You're going to go down to Web Forms, and there's going to be a COVID response form. When you click on that, uh, the names of your children will appear, and then you'll have to select each one of them, submit answers to four questions, and then do that for each of your students. It sounds a lot like a lengthy process. Once you've done it once, twice, it won't take more than just a few minutes. Um, and what we're asking you to do is to do that actually before you leave the home. Um, because what, it, what will happen for us at the school is we'll get a report at eight o'clock when we go to do a uh, drop off of all the families that have uh, submitted it and then those who haven't yet and any family that hasn't submitted it yet will have to ask those questions of you in person. So you're submitting those questions online to us in advance is going to enable us to, to have a much more streamlined drop off process. So that's the screening questions. We're also going to provide within um, the, the Providence app and in the EPAC tomorrow some step-by-step some step -step instructions to submitting those screening questions. So if me explaining it to you just now felt difficult, uh, that's okay. We'll provide some more step-by-step -step instructions to help you get there. And then once you've done it once or twice, obviously, uh, you know, it'll be old hat once we get into um, you know, the second week of the school year. So drop-off timing is actually not going to change substantially. Uh, students are gonna be permitted to enter the building at 8 a.m. as in the past. We are gonna extend the drop-off time. So previously it used to be drop-off begins at 8 a.m. and goes till 8.10. We're gonna extend that from 8 a.m. to 8.15. That's to uh, accomplish a couple things. We're gonna be doing more drop-off by the side entrance, which I'll talk about in, in, in the moment, a moment. And, uh, and also to allow for uh, screening questions that we might ask uh, in the morning. Uh, we do ask that parents would not drop off students at the main entrance uh, to congregate and wait up until 8 a.m. In the past, families have done that. It's not been a problem. Uh, but this year, we're asking you not to do that so that we don't have students from a variety of different cohorts uh, congregating and mingling in close quarters on those front entrance stairs. Uh, drop off location. So our preference is that families would use the drop-off line along the side entrance of the building to drop off their students. In order to access that line, you're actually going to enter the far parking lot back by the field, uh, so the furthest uh, spot away from the school building. And then you'll proceed around the outside of that parking lot to the far side of the building um, and, and drive down the driveway along the west side of the building. If me describing this all to you with words is confusing, that's understandable. There's a map uh, that's on the last page of these drop-off pickup instructions that will be very helpful for you as well. Uh, so that's our preference is that you would use that, uh, that drop-off line. That's whether you're um, dropping off a grammar school student or an upper school student. Now there is the alternate option that families may use the main entrance. And here are the cases where we're uh, you know, asking you to consider we're asking you to limit uh, using that main entrance for these cases. Uh, one, if you're an upper school student who's driving yourself, you have to park and we want you to walk in the main entrance like you normally would. Of course, if you're driving siblings, you can walk in with them as well. 
Uh, faculty members, when you bring your children, of course, you'll walk through the main entrance as well. Um, the, the third case would be if a student is entering with a parent who needs to enter the building for some specific purpose. Maybe they need to speak to a faculty member or a staff member that will be permitted. But again, we're asking our parents to, to limit the amount of times they do that. Um, I, as I mentioned above, we are asking families not to drive up to the main door, drop your kids off and drive off. If you're going to drop off your kids, i.e. not park, we're asking you to use that side entrance process. For the first two weeks of the school year, we uh, do want our pre-K and kindergarten parents to, to park and walk their kids to their classrooms so that they can get comfortable with their new school environment. Uh, we'll help them so that over the course of the first two weeks, they learn the building, they learn um, how to get from the side drop off to their classroom, those kind of things. But for those first two weeks, uh, we think it'd be in both the students and probably parents' best interests uh, to have uh, those students walk to their classroom. So if you're a parent of a, a pre-K or kindergarten student, uh, go ahead and park in the parking lot, walk in that main entrance, and then you'll be uh, allowed to, to walk your student down to their classroom. If you're an adult entering the building, um, we will always ask some basic screening questions. How are you feeling? Um, and, uh, and we will do a temperature screen check as well um, at that front door. Uh, after entering the building, grammar school students should proceed directly to their grade level cl classrooms. Uh, this is of course different from the past um, where they would have gathered in the multi-purpose room there to head straight to their grade level craft classrooms. Upper school students uh, should proceed to their lockers first to drop off backpacks and supplies. Uh, then they can hang up any coats or store athletic uh, bags in uh, particular designated places. The high schoolers will continue to use the coat rooms. The seventh and eighth graders will have a different designated space for coats and other supplies that don't fit in their lockers. Uh, if you're an upper school student who wishes to uh, have your locker or have your lunch in the milk cooler, you'll just place it in the milk cooler at that point. You'll get your books and supplies for your first class and you'll proceed to the sanctuary and sit in cohorts. So the seventh and eighth grade will be on one side of the sanctuary, the ninth through twelfth will be in a separate side of the sanctuary. Of course, during all this time, upper school students, you'll be required to wear a mask. If you arrive late uh, or if you're a parent dropping your student uh, off outside the normal drop-off hours, you have two different options. You can park and uh, head to the main entrance with your student and then a staff member in the office will meet you at the door and let the student in. Uh, and that will count as checking that student in. The second thing you can do is simply drop your student off at the main entrance, uh, have them buzz in by themselves and then just call the main office uh, to let them know that you've dropped your student off and you're checking them in. So some of those previous sign my student in procedures will look a little bit different um, and will involve either calling the office if you're dropping your student off or taking your student up to that front door where um, an office staff person will let them in. Uh, upper school students can still check themselves in, but as a reminder, any late arrival from an upper school student does require a parent to call in. That's drop off. Uh, pickup. So grammar school, I'm going to talk about this in terms of grammar school and then upper school pickup. For grammar school, uh, we're asking that grammar school students typically be picked up uh, in the line by the side of the building, just as we've asked you to drop them off there. Uh, as with drop off, in order to access the line, you're going to enter that far parking lot by the field uh, and then proceed along to the driveway on the west side of the building. That pattern is the same for drop off and pick up. Again, the map will be helpful to you there. Um, again, we're noting that pre-K and kindergarten parents can park and enter the main entrance so that you can pick your kids up from the classroom at the end of the day for those first two weeks, after which we'll have prepared them to, to make the walk to the side entrance so you can pick them up along that side uh, drop, uh, pickup line. Uh, grammar school pickup will begin at 3.05, so a touch earlier than in the past uh, with the first car in the pickup line. We're actually asking that that first car would stop at the corner of the building as opposed to going all the way down because what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, radio those, uh, those numbers that each family is assigned for grammar school pickup. We're gonna radio those earlier in the line because students have to proceed from uh, their, grammar, their grammar school classrooms instead of just the multi-purpose room. So in order to uh, not have this delay of, oh, we've radioed and now we have to wait for a student to proceed all the way, we're gonna radio those numbers in early. So what that means is if, if you can remember the first car in the line, this is gonna be difficult for those who've done this for many years, stop at the corner of the building so we can radio, start radioing in numbers at that point. And that's where the line will form and then it'll proceed into that back parking lot.
again, the map will hopefully be of um, some help to you there. It is very important that the number that you're assigned and will be given uh, at supply drop-off on Monday uh, for, for pickup or for pickup uh, is displayed prominently in your vehicle um, so that the person that's radioing those numbers in can see it. Um, so, so we are asking that you'd actually show the card that we give you as opposed to, to, to signing numbers or anything like that. Uh, just to alleviate confusion, confusion to speed up the process so that we're able to get everybody picked up in, um, in an efficient manner. Uh, it's our, actually our preference that grammar school students that have an upper school sibling, that that upper school sibling would be the one to pick up the grammar school student from their classroom and then proceed out the main entrance to where mom or dad have parked their car. Um, this is going to simplify some of the processes so that a family doesn't have to go through the line and then loop back around. So if, you're, if you have a grammar school student and an upper school student and you're gonna pick them up, have that upper school student go pick up their grammar schooler from their classroom and then they can exit the building out the front and come to your car. Uh, all grammar school students should be picked up by 3.20 p.m. at the latest. So drop off begins at 3.05. Uh, everyone should be picked up by 3.20 uh, at the latest. If there are students that has, have still not been picked up by 3.20, uh, we'll make a phone call uh, to families to confirm that someone's on their way to pick up that student. As we mentioned in the pandemic response plan, we aren't uh, able to offer any school organized aftercare option this year. But if you do have aftercare needs, please do uh, reach out to an administrator or to the school office, uh, and we'll work with you to find some sort of suitable arrangements for your family. So that's grammar school pickup. Upper school pickup. Upper school students will be dismissed from their seventh hour class at 315 after their end of day chores have been completed. That's the same as normal. Upper school students who drive themselves are gonna gather their stuff uh, from their last class, their lockers, and then exit the school's main entrance. That's the same as normal. Uh, parents picking up an upper school student will be asked to park and wait for the upper school student to come out to them uh, in the parking lot. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it's our preference that any upper school students that have a younger sibling in the grammar school would be the ones to actually go pick up their grammar school student from the classroom as opposed to having the parent come in the building. Uh, if you're going to pick up an upper school uh, parent and you're in a park in the parking lot, we ask that you be there by 3.15 p.m. at the latest. Uh, and this is a change. Previously, families perhaps came later and their students waited and, and then just walked out when the car got there. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is prevent several different cohorts from, from sort of just being stuck at that main entrance waiting for mom and dad. And so what we're asking our upper school families uh, to do is to be in the parking lot parked by 315 so that when the bell rings and your student's done, they can proceed directly out those doors to your car. Again, we don't have aftercare or a designated space for upper school students after school hours. So we're asking that all upper school students be out of the building by 3.30 p.m. at the latest. The last thing to note with drop off is if you're coming to pick or pick up, if you're coming to pick up your kid a little bit early, um, that's fine. Uh, we just ask that you call the school office and then we'll walk them out to the main entrance so you can pick them up. Of course, upper school students who drive themselves will be allowed to leave campus early uh, as long as they have uh, that excused from a parent. All right, that was a lot. That's drop off. It is and pick up. It is all in a document that you can access on the app right now or in the EPAC tomorrow. I'm gonna pass it back to Mr. Buckles, who's gonna talk a little bit more about our academics for the coming year. All right, thank you so much, Kyle. Uh, before I get into academics, there were a couple of other things I just wanted to note uh, as Kyle was talking about the drop off and pickup procedures. Typically, uh, the ones that you'll see out there will be myself personally or Mr. Keating personally at one of those doors so that you'll see a familiar face, you know, who's receiving your kids when you get here. Uh, the only times that there would be an exception is if one or both of us are not here that day and then we would have a faculty member subbing for us. But Lord willing, those first few weeks, it will be out there every day and we'll get to see you. You've got a familiar face uh, welcoming your kids to the school. Uh, also, kind of in line with some of that is just in general, uh, visitors protocol, you know, we are trying to limit visitors into the building. Most of what we want is those coming into the building are those who are staying in all day, faculty, students, uh, and those who are serving throughout the day. But if you ever are coming in the building, whether it be at the beginning of the day or sometime in the middle of the day, uh, make sure you stop by the office, make sure you're wearing a mask, make sure that you sanitize as you enter. 
um, and, uh, and just that you're kind of prepared for those kinds of protocols. You'll see whenever you do end up coming in the building that our office is a little bit different. You can't necessarily just step right into the office. We have that kind of clear window out at front uh, where you'll see the receptionist sitting there and they'll be happy to help you and kind of direct you as is needed. And again, I want to remind that any visitors, we would like to limit to interacting only with one cohort that day if they are able. Um, and uh, I want to encourage our new families as well. Uh, you know, just as we're kind of asking most of you to use that side drop off lane as much as possible, you know, say, you know, you're sitting there saying, well, I'm not a pre K or a K family, but I'm a new family and I'm still getting used to this school. Uh, if that's you, we want to, you know, welcome you to be able to come into the school to drop off your children, not only the first day, but, but for the, you know, the first several days as you are growing in your comfort level with the school and with your child's teacher and all of that, we want to be very sensitive to it. So again, the rule of thumb is we want people to default to that drive-through drop-off lane uh, unless you have a reason to come into the building or if you're still acclimating or if your child is still acclimating to school. We do want to welcome those families in, just limiting the amount of visitors that are coming through the building. Uh, one other note before I get into academics is, especially with all of these pandemic things, you probably have all kinds of questions in your head and you're thinking long term. You're thinking, well, what about Harvest Festival and what about Literature Festival and what about Lessons and Carols and what about this? And there's so many things. Uh, and so I just want to, you know, say right now uh, that we're mindful of all of these things, but because we know how rapidly and how greatly things may change between now and some of these more long term events, uh, if you have questions about those now, it's very unlikely that we'll have concrete answers for you at this point uh, because those are so far out. Uh, but I do just want to remind you as part of our pandemic response plan is we are evaluating every event uh, as we're approaching it. And about a month out from that event, we will give an update on what will be happening with it. Is it going to happen as normal? Is it going to be changed or tweaked in some way? Um, or is it going to need to be postponed or even canceled? Uh, and so we will be proactively communicating with you about those things. So if you have those kinds of questions in your, hand, uh, in your head, I just want to say right now that it's unlikely we'll have very concrete answers for you about anything that's pretty far off into the future. So without further ado, let's talk about academics. So I just have a few things to note. Uh, first of all, I mentioned last year around this time our work on the academic catalog, uh, which is a complete catalog of all of our curricular programs pre-K through 12. Last year, our faculty did a lot of collaboration on a very, very large document that uh, was sort of the first draft of the catalog. And so now this year will be the process of reconciling a lot of those thoughts and those comments, cleaning up the formatting. And by the end of this year, we will have, uh, Lord willing, a complete academic catalog. We're very excited about that. It will outline all of our academic programs from pre-K through 12, and that will be a resource to teachers, it can be a resource to families, and it can be a resource to other classical Christian schools that are looking to start up in other parts of the nation that you know, we could come alongside and, and help and share those things with which we have developed. Uh, in addition, uh, Ms. Brewer will be taking the lead on a lot of that. So I just wanted to recognize her and the work that she's already putting into that this year. Uh, it's something that she's sort of taking off of my plate as I assume some more of the responsibilities that I have as the headmaster. And we're very thankful for her willingness to serve in that way. Uh, I wanted to note there's some differences to the academic schedule, uh, particularly in the upper school. I mentioned earlier there are some changes to the grammar school academic schedule, uh, mainly that their lunches in the middle of the day are now split from just being two shifts to being three shifts so that all three cohorts have their own lunch shift as well as their own recess time in the middle of the day. Uh, so there's more details with that. If you're interested, you can ask teachers, well, when exactly is lunch going to be? When's recess going to be? I won't get into all those details right now. Likewise, upper school will have two different lunch shifts, one for middle school and one for high school. Uh, I also wanted to note that academic labs will be carrying on in the upper school this year. Uh, and so whenever the high school is at lunch, middle school will be at academic lab and vice versa. And academic labs will be used for many different things. Uh, we're going from having two a week last year to having four a week again this year. And uh, many times it'll be a study hall period. But something else we want to do is give students a chance sometimes during academic lab to go outside, get some fresh air because we're going to have a lot of time in the building where we're cooped up wearing masks, but to go into a context where they can remove that mask, get some sunshine, get some fresh air, uh, and give them that opportunity midday. 
Um, likewise, we are uh, bringing back upper school PE and chemistry this year. And so upper school PE took a hiatus last year, but it is returning. So seventh through 10th grades will have PE once again this year. And so seventh through 10th graders, make sure you've got some PE clothes ready to bring with you. You won't need them exactly on the very first day of school. We'll give you more instructions when you arrive. And chemistry is back. Chemistry was only out last year because we were in the middle of resequencing our high school science classes. And so we are bringing chemistry from ninth grade up to 10th grade and biology from 10th to ninth grade. And so we're glad to say that this year, things are all back in place. Mrs. Erdlowski is very excited to bring the ninth graders back into, I'm sorry, actually no, the 10th graders into chemistry now this year. And so she's very excited to be teaching that course again. Uh, and then we also have a couple of combined classes uh, in the high school. Ninth and 10th grade will be combined for uh, some classes as well as 11th and 12th, mainly literature and history classes. Those are classes where the sequence is of less of a concern. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons that we've done that. Uh, some of it is maximizing our resources here at the school, but another is giving more classes opportunities to interact. And so our whole high school is one cohort, and so mixing these classes doesn't mix any particular cohorts, but it is going to give more students an opportunity to interact and engage in those discussions together. And then uh, I want to announce, and this is more of an announcement, so to speak, I bet some have been wondering about Shakespeare in a week. Uh, as many of you know, every year in January, we take the first week in the upper school to put together a complete Shakespeare production, and we present it at the end of that first week and back. And I bet some of you are wondering, well, is that still going to happen? What's the plan? So as I said before, it's pretty far off. And so exactly what's gonna happen, I can't say. But what I can say is that we are moving forward with Drama Week and that we will have it in some fashion. Now it's unlikely at this point, it looks like that we would be able to have the regular live performance in the multi-purpose room with everybody. But we have a few different ideas of how we might be able to either have a more virtual presentation uh, or you know, find some other kind of alternative. A lot of it will depend on what the circumstances are as we start to approach January. But we know that there are some options before us that will be feasible, even if it's a more virtual type of presentation. So we'll talk more about that when the students return, but I want to announce that the play we are doing this year is King Lear. And so some of you probably are aware of that play or have known it, or maybe you've read it in Mr. Duvier's class, but that is the play that we will be doing this year. We're gonna move ahead and we're gonna read it in our literature classes. We'll have auditions, we'll cast the play, we'll assign students to crews, and then we're gonna to work together in a collaborative process through the fall to figure out what's going to be the best way to continue this tradition, even in the midst of a pandemic, even if it means that we don't have a live performance. So we're very excited about some of the ideas the faculty were discussing just the other day about Drama Week and uh, some of the different ways that this play can continue to move forward and we can give students the opportunity to have that part of their education, even though we have certain limits surrounding us. So that's it for academics. I'm gonna hand it back to Mr. Keating for student life and upcoming events, and then we will close out after that. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much for sticking with us. We know it's a, a, a long meeting and a lot of information, but we felt like uh, you'd appreciate having the most amount of information before we head back to the year. I have a few brief updates about student life, uh, a couple notes about some upcoming events, and then uh, as uh, Mr. Buckles mentioned, we'll close out. Um, I suppose the most significant uh, announcement in student life is that the upper school boys aren't gonna be required to wear ties while wearing masks. Um, so I'm sure that will be the most popular announcement of the, uh, of the evening. Um, additionally, so with respect to upper school lockers, we are going to assign lockers this year due to the need to maintain uh, cohort distinctions between 7th and 8th and 9th through 12th grade. The 7th and 8th graders will have lockers that are on the kitchen side, and then the 9th through 12th graders will have their lockers that are over by the coat rooms where the grammar school eats their lunch. Um, <clears throat> we... Uh, our lunches are this year in the grammar school and upper school will be monitored uh, exclusively by faculty. So we're excited about that. We're excited about the opportunity our faculty will have um, to uh, eat lunch with their students to uh, continue to form and shape them as whole people. Um, the second part of that is recess. And Mr. Buckles and I are going to be uh, out at uh, most every recess, but we need a second person out there for those recess duties. And that second person could be you. Uh, we need parent volunteers to do that. Um, they're, they're essentially 
an hour and a half window each day, five days a week. Uh, now, we're not asking for one person to do all of that. Um, we're gonna divide that up, but we need some volunteers from our parents who have that schedule availability or flexibility and, uh, and, because, and, and you won't be out there as the, the lone person, you'll be out there with an administrator. Um, and so you're just out there to uh, be a second pair of eyes to make sure all our students are safe. And uh, we, we need that uh, in order to be able to offer recess. So uh, when, we, when we're asking for volunteers on this, we, we absolutely need um, parents who are willing to step up and, and, and help in this way. If you are one of those parents who's able to do that, please do reach out. Um, to Mrs. Case at uh, the office email address, so office at providencestl.org, um, and we'll get you uh, set up with a, a, a time and a window to help out with recess monitoring. Um, within uh, student life in the upper school, uh, the house system is gonna be very difficult to implement in its normal terms this year due to our cohort restrictions. And so after discussion with the faculty, uh, we've decided to sort of put the house system on sabbatical this year. And we're gonna do some different events throughout the year that are gonna replace some things that we might have done normally as house competitions uh, that still allow us to have levity and, uh, and even some competition throughout the year. But we are gonna take this year as a chance to um, review and update and potentially make some changes to the house system going forward so that it can be uh, fresh and exciting and, and something that all of our upper school students are excited about. Sort of tied to that is one of the more immediate events that's upcoming, which is upper school retreat. Um, and I'm somewhat disappointed to, to announce that we're gonna postpone that upper school retreat uh, until the spring. Our hope is that we will be able to offer it in the spring for all of our upper school students. We know this is a highlight of the year for our upper school students. And so we're gonna do everything in our power to make sure it still happens. But given all the changes to our schedule, all the logistics with uh, putting together these first few weeks, we felt like it was uh, in the best interest of our students and our faculty to postpone the house retreat or the upper school retreat until the spring. Uh, and so we'll give you more details as we move into second semester about what that will look like. Uh, Literature Festival is another event that is coming up quite soon. Um, and so there might be some tweaks to what the normal Literature Festival day will look like. The faculty spent uh, a good amount of time today discussing some, some changes, some ideas for what our Literature Festival uh, might be, but we are going to have it, and we are excited uh, to announce the uh, the author and his work that we'll be celebrating this year's literature festival. We'll be celebrating the work of Kenneth Graham, uh, who's most famous for, of course, the Wind in the Willows. Finally, extracurriculars. Um, so we are planning on moving forward with volleyball and cross country uh, for our fall sports, though they will be in limited ways. Um, so we do want to encourage our students to still participate in uh, those sports as they're available to your age groups, uh, recognizing that those seasons won't look exactly like they normally would. And, uh, and we're, we share disappointment with our student athletes at some of those changes that will have to be made. Um, and, uh, and if you have questions about any of those changes or what athletics will look like this year, please do reach out to our athletic director, uh, Mrs. Katie Skogan, and she'd be happy to give you more details and let you know what exactly the lay of the land is with each of our different athletic teams. We don't know, of course, yet about fall or winter sports, namely basketball. Um, those are decisions that will be made probably in the month of October at some point. Um, and then the one other extracurricular that uh, I'm mostly commenting on to say we don't know yet is Dulcis Cantus. Um, it's to be determined. We're still working with Mrs. Ryder and trying to figure out the best way to move forward with Dolce's Contus as well. So that's to be determined. Stay tuned for more information about what the plan is for Dolce's Contus. Those are my student life updates. I did wanna just note a couple upcoming, the, the events that normally would be on our schedule that would be coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, one of the most immediate would be our all school convocation that we normally host on the, on the morning of the first day of school and we invite parents to come in. We gather as a whole school. Obviously that won't be possible this year. And so we're not able to do an all school convocation this year, uh, but we do promise that there will be an administrator running down the halls, ringing the, the bell to uh, start the school year. So we will at least maintain that tradition. Walking, walking in the halls, no running. Um, the other upcoming event that is around the corner are parent seminars. Uh, and we offer these parent seminars every year. There are a variety of them. This year, we're gonna offer them on Zoom. Um, and so that will actually give some flexibility to families that maybe aren't able to watch the, 
a live uh, version of the seminar. You can watch a recorded version of the seminar as well. Um, those, those parent seminars, there's three of them. One is an introduction to classical education. This is our seminar that we ask all of our new families to participate in. It gives you a, a good introduction to what life is like at Providence and what um, our particular brand of education looks like. And so we ask that all of our new families take some time to watch uh, that seminar. Uh, there will be a college prep seminar offered, and this is especially relevant for high school students and high school parents, um, and it's particularly targeted at high school parents in terms of uh, helping you understand what that process looks like. Freshmen, parents of freshmen, sophomores uh, especially might find that uh, helpful. And then the last seminar that we offer each year to our parents is uh, Becoming Tech Wise in a Tech Obsessed World. Um, and we recommend this seminar for parents of anywhere from third or fourth grade up to eighth grade. If you're outside those windows, you're still welcome to, to participate in this seminar. It's just about what does it look like for us as um, a Christian community to uh, use tech wisely, um, to be uh, tech wise as opposed to tech obsessed. Uh, and it's easier said than done in each one of us. Uh, probably knows that even within our own households. And so that's uh, the third seminar option offered to our parents. So those are uh, upcoming. Those will be, uh, we'll, we'll publish more about the dates and times of those upcoming parent seminars in the in forthcoming EPACs uh, in the next couple of weeks. All right, that's it for upcoming events. So I'm going to pass things back to Mr. Buckles to wrap us up for the evening. Thank you again, Kyle. All right, so as we close out, uh, I'm sure uh, all of the various details that have come at you in the past hour and 15 minutes or so, it's been a mix of encouragements, surely a mix of disappointments as well. Uh, and so we're so thankful that you've uh, borne with us here to the end of this orientation. And we're very excited. We wanna say that we're tremendously excited to be back this school year. Our faculty are so excited to be back and we hope that you're excited as well. And we understand, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of new inconveniences that are getting in front of us as we get into this school year. Uh, but all that I ask is that uh, you approach those inconveniences with patience and with proactive communication, uh, that you would be willing to continue to exercise plenty of patience and charity with us as we make decisions, but also communicate proactively. If you have concerns, if you have questions, uh, please don't keep them to yourself. Please bring them forward because uh, I would love to hear them. I would love to talk through that with you and learn how we can continue to serve you all better. So along with that, uh, I think we've just put up again the link uh, if you have questions. Uh, so we are officially getting to the close of the presentation here. And so if you have a question that we did not answer, please submit it in the form. Uh, and that will be the best way for us to process all of the various questions that may come through there. And then we will be offering answers to those, uh, as I said before, by this Monday would be our plan so that you get all of your questions answered before that first day of school. All right, well, we're not gonna take up any more of your time this evening. I'm gonna close us in a word of prayer and then we will look forward to seeing all of you on Monday. Let's pray. Our gracious Lord and our heavenly Father, you are so good to us, Lord. And we have been so reminded of the many things that we took for granted for so many years. Lord, as we found ourselves uh, suddenly uh, wrenched out of our normal rhythms and routines of life, and as we go into this year, uh, so many of the things that will be different uh, because of the current circumstances that we are in, we ask and pray, Lord, that you would use this time to soften us, or that you would soften our hearts, that you would humble us, that you would teach us the various things that we once took for granted, that we would cherish them all the more when they may return to us. God, we're thankful for this community, these parents and these students, these teachers and Everyone, Lord, who gets on board to see the work of the school promoted and to be fruitful in the lives of students. Lord, we ask that truly you would bring growth, uh, that we cannot uh, make a student grow wise, make a student grow virtuous or eloquent. Lord, all we can do is seek to create the right conditions for you to meet them. And so, God, we pray that we would be able to create such conditions, even under such circumstances, and that, Lord, you would meet each one of us here. We're thankful, God, for all of the promises that you have fulfilled as they are outlined in your word, 
and all the promises that you still give to your people today. Give us faith to trust in them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our Zoom orientation. Good night.